Hey, this is Kristen Baker, the Arts and Humanities Specialist for the YMCA of the USA. I am here um, with Stan Zimmerman, the executive producer and co-creator of Rita Rocks, uh, going into its second season on Lifetime Television. Stan, when um, can people see season two? It premieres October 5th on Lifetime, so look out for it. Definitely check it out. Um, and so Stan, what has been your, like, you know, your producer and writer, but what has been your path to this sort of artistic place in your life? Well, I actually grew up in a suburb of Detroit, Michigan, and I used to get variety sent to my house when I was like eight years old. I just had this passion for theater and television and movies at a really young age. And my parents luckily were very supportive and sent me to Cranbrook Theater School when I was eight years old. And so that kind of started my path and I always had this very active imagination. And in my bedroom alone, I created a, a television network. And an entire network, an not entire just network. a show. No, 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 I had a whole network. <laughs> and I made one of those crazy schedule boards and I scheduled against you know, ABC and NBC, and I drew advertisements. And you, how old I, were you? I was probably like 10, 11, 12 in that area when I did that. And I did this wow. for years. I was just, it was insane. I was just, you know, uh, didn't play sports. So I kind of, that was my, uh, you know, after I was dancing West Side Story in my bedroom, this is what I would do of course, in, be yes. in between. Yeah. yeah. Um, so created your own network. That is fantastic. Yeah, I so love that. Odd. And, but it makes total sense to go full circle and now to have created a TV show yeah. that's on television. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So you were, you said you were eight years old when you had Variety start sent to your house. Do you remember kind of that moment when you thought, I have to be an artist, like I have to, like creativity is my life. Like, do you remember that? One of the first, I think, was going to this theater school and I was so young and I had to get permission to go because I was younger than the age that they allowed in oh, there. Okay. And being on stage and getting that first laugh, mm -hmm. that was just like, that was the drug. That was like, oh my God, what is this sound? It was just, <laughs> it kind of sent shivers up and down my spine. And then really? I was like, I have to do comedy. So they would give us plays every week and I would kind of improvise or change the words or make myself like be fat or just do funny shtick mm -hmm. stuff. And then it was just, I have to keep doing the comedy thing. It mm -hmm. just really got me going. Oh, so comedy. And so what kind of like, what um, art disciplines have you, I mean, it, I get the sense that you've just kind of had a lot of art disciplines that you've worked with and played in like what what kind of well, what's from a very young age my uh, mother supported I started drawing so she took me to the Art Institute in Detroit to encourage that and then you know when I started with acting coming up with these I always, always had these crazy ideas and would get the kids in the neighborhood to do these plays yeah. and then from that you know that came I think the writing and the acting and then uh, just doing it all through high school and be very mm -hmm. involved in the theater group in high school and uh, becoming the thespian president of the theater group mm -hmm. and being the leads in the plays and then uh, going to Summerstock in New Hampshire. Okay. I really wanted to go to the next level of it. So I got the New York Times Magazine and they had all these different theater camps. So I oh, okay. got a scholarship and I did that for two summers and everybody there said, if you're really serious about acting, You've got to go to New York, which led me to go to NYU to audition there, and luckily I got in and uh, kind of followed, wow. followed that path where I met my writing partner at the oh, dorm. Okay. okay. And I was always kind of very nervous to do auditions. I just like, my face would freeze up and I couldn't be natural. And there was just something about writing that just felt uh, just more comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And so we would start writing in between classes and then we luckily in our senior year got an agent out in LA. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it happened really quickly. And at that time I was also doing work in casting office in New York and so I was getting okay. more behind the scenes and away from the acting. But I used the acting discipline in my writing. Like if we would write characters, I would always read them as the characters, mm -hmm. which became really funny when we were writing Golden Girls and suddenly I would take on, you know, Blanche Devereaux and we have these southern accents, which yeah. was really funny. But very early on in acting school, I remember they taught me that acting is reacting and just, and you have to be watching and observing people at all times. Mm -hmm. So just as a young actor, all, even if you're just sitting in a mall or a park and watching people and observing people, I think that's something so easy that you can do. 
interesting. And, and yeah. bringing that in, like, why are they doing that? So even now today, I just love watching people or going out with friends and kind of making up stories like, what are those people thinking? Or what are they saying? Mm -hmm. And it, I think it really helps in my creative process. So just being that constant observer. Yes, you have to. I mean, you yeah. have to kind of look outside the world and you bring it in. And I always get asked the question, like, well, how could you write? A, I was really young, like, 23 writing for the Golden Girls or mm -hmm. you know and we end up writing a lot for women characters like Rita Rocks or Roseanne or the Gilmore Girls and it really is listening you know I mm -hmm. say I have like very vocal mother and grandmother and sister and it's always just listening to other people and kind of taking that in and then kind of feeding it through your brain and out through other characters. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your mom being yeah. very supportive um, when you were younger, but can you maybe talk about some of the other like adult influencers who really kind of encouraged you or helped you find your passion? Luckily, I had a second grade teacher that talked to my mother and said, he's so creative and he's making up all these plays in school. And she suggested Cranbrook Theater School. And luckily, we went out there and my parents were very supportive of that. Um, I've luckily had teachers all throughout okay. high school that I really connected with, mm -hmm. almost on a friend level. It was, I think I have like an older soul when I was really little, and I think they responded to that, and they just encouraged me to keep going and, and do it. And I just had this passion to, you know, I wasn't going to let anything stop me. I just, I always pictured myself doing this, and... Oh, interesting. Um, that, like, visualization. I, think it, I didn't yeah. know visualization when I was little, but yeah. I kind of was, I guess, in some spiritual way. And I remember telling my little sister, oh, you know, one day I'm going to live in this mansion in Hollywood. <laughs> and then, you know, not a mansion, but I'm, I have a nice house. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how that all came to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then what do you do? Like, you're kind of creative, like, all day long. You're multitasking. What do you do to kind of recharge that creative battery? Uh, I listen to music. It, it's one of the uh, bad sides of writing is that all I'm doing all day is looking at like black letters on white paper. So it's really hard for me to read novels and things oh, at yeah. night. If I, I do that. read, I'll read more spiritual books to kind of take mm -hmm. me out rather than storytelling. Mm -hmm. But that's why I love listening to music. It just it takes me to another place or it's just swimming, or just, there's something with water where just like ideas kind of just come to me. If I just, Oh, interesting. Whether it's washing dishes or taking a shower or going in the pool, if I just, I kind of just say like, oh my God, how am I going to solve this story problem or life problem? And then it just kind of comes to me when, with Through water. water. I don't oh, know what that is. But yeah, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like shutting down and not, you know, I don't need to go to every party. I don't, I can just, kind of not answer the phone, you know, for a day and just, yeah. I know what I need to kind of recharge to, because there's just so many people looking to me, especially on this TV show, that I've got to come on Monday morning with just full energy to yeah. go, you know, through the whole week. Because you're like the decision maker. I mean, like, everyone long. runs like, through, yeah. I mean, to... I, was bare, I wasn't even out of bed and suddenly, you know, texts and emails come about, yeah. like, casting this part and doing this and that. And, yeah. Literally, from the morning I wake up till I go to sleep at night, people are coming and asking questions about wardrobe and hair and music and editing and, and all, you're the guy. All, all day long. Yeah. And you just have to make a decision and, and you just have to feel confident in it. And, but it, it's pretty exciting. What message would you give to you know, YMCA staff who work, YMCA art staff specifically, who work with you know, young kids and sort of you know, trying to cultivate their artistic side? I actually ended up teaching at this Cranbrook Theater School where I went as oh. uh, a kid during uh, college. I would go back and teach. And I think if I wasn't writing, I'd be a teacher. I just mm -hmm. love um, kind of getting in the minds of kids and and just challenging them to be creative and not treating them as children, but as oh, interesting. just as equals and, yeah. and, and really asking them to like stretch their mind. And then I think they step up to the plate mm -hmm. when... So having higher expectations for the kids artistically. Yes. And just letting them explain themselves and, and pulling them into your world. And mm -hmm. I think they will, they will join you and, and, uh, fly even higher. And I, I just, you know, can't stress that enough. And just, I think looking out in the world and just being sensitive to other people, mm -hmm. I think, is, is pretty important. 
Well, thank you so much, Stan, yeah. for your time. And be sure to watch Rita Rocks, Season 2, Lifetime, right. in October. October. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.